we're doing the survival theory. I'm in a woodsy area. I'm in East Texas. It's in the triple digits. Humidity is about 95%. Super hot. You can't go very long without consuming water. Water is vitally important right now. There's no ponds nearby. There's no streams or creeks. The creeks are dried up. It hasn't rained in two or three weeks. Enough to even water the grass. Uh, the trees are starting to wilt, but I've got to get water. That's where plastic bags could come in very handy. What we're going to do today is take a look at how much water can you get from plastic bags, from grass, from leaves on the tree, using different methods. I'm getting thirsty, so let's get busy. So the first method I'm going to try is just to envelop some leaves within the bag in the sunlight. So I've got that and I'll do two of them. Actually, I'll do a different kind of tree here. Get one that's in the sunlight. So for bag number one, I just stuffed as much of the limb, oak limb in there as possible. I can already see some evaporation on there. And I forgot what kind of tree this is, this kind. But I've put as many limbs in there as possible. I can already see some evaporation. So let's move on to another one. So for bag number three, I'm gonna try a different method. I'm gonna to go to the same kind of oak tree I'm going to do individual leaves and fill the bag with those leaves. See how much water that collects versus hanging it on the tree. Alright, so I've got quite a bit of leaves in there. And what I'm going to do is just throw this on the ground right in the sun. So now here I'm at the holly. So I'm going to get a bunch of leaves, put them in here. There's even some pepper vine in here. That won't hurt anything. I'll mix it in there. There's even some cat briar. I don't want to put the cat briar in there because these spines might puncture the bag. All right, so that's about the same volume as the oak leaves or close to it. Seal it up and just throw it down in the sun. Well, I forgot to hit the record button, but here's what I just did. I went to the shady area to collect grass to put in the bag. I went to the shady area to collect the grass because it's going to have the most water. It's been out of the sunlight. It'll probably you know, be a little bit healthier. So I just cut a bunch. Didn't pull it up by the roots. I just cut a bunch, shoved it in the bag, and now we'll go throw this in the sunlight. So now we've got, look at all that moisture already forming on it. That's around a limb of oak. Look at all the moisture on that one. That's around this kind of tree. I don't remember what kind it is. And over here, laying in the sunlight, this is oak leaves, yopon leaves, and this is grass. So let's check on them later and see if we can get something to drink. So it's been about 90 minutes. 
Here's the bag around the limb of oak. I'm going to try to shake all the water I can off of there. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Barely any water at all. Now let's check this one up here. I'll unzip the ziplock. Give it a shake. I see there's still quite a bit of moisture on the leaves that we're not able to get. And on this bag, sorry there was a bug on my hand. Not very much water in that either, but a lot more than the oak. Alright, so here we have, here's the bag with oak leaves. Here's the bag with Yopon. Here's the bag with grass. And these bags of individual leaves or grass are a lot easier to shake and get the wa water on the bottom than one of the bags on the limb. So let's go check these out. Now if you're in Texas, one technique I use when I'm in East Texas area, if you find a low-lying area where there's green grass, you can dig around. You can find this Chuck Norris Sea Forest water. It's a force of nature. It's pretty awesome. It's really good. So you just got to find a low spot with green grass. I mean, this stuff is awesome too, all natural. You just right out of the ground, you know. And a couple months ago, I buried a sea forest water bottle cap, just a cap, in the ground here to try to get some more. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, see, so you bury the cap, and it'll grow a bottle of fresh Chuck Norris sea forest water. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So to review, hour and a half wrapped around a limb of oak. Can you see how much is in there? That's not very much. A big tablespoon. Wrapped around that other tree. About the same amount, the big tablespoon. Now the individual oak leaves in a bag. The problem I see with the large oak leaves is that the leaves are so large that you're not really getting the water off of them. It builds on the leaves and you have to lick each leaf to get all the water. You know, you're just going to lose a lot of the water to evaporation after you pull them out because, I mean, these leaves are wet but it's not collecting in the bottom of the bag. You can't really strain the leaves because you know, they're just wet, very wet. So you're getting about the same amount Maybe a little bit more because we had more leaves in there, but that's a big tablespoon. Now let's check out this Yopon. Now in the past I've gotten quite a bit from Yopon. And these are wet also, but 
they're not holding as much water. I guess because of the surface area of those oak leaves. I don't know, they just, they just hold a lot of water. And I can actually squeeze these yopon leaves. Whereas you can't really do that with the oak. Well, look at that. Actually, because I pulled the leaves out, I pulled most of the water out. There's barely any water left. Now, when I first picked this bag up off the ground, I noticed that there is quite a bit of water in there, maybe two tablespoons. So by picking it up and moving the water around, I see my hands soaking wet just from being in the bag. I, all the leaves took the water with him because I had moved the water around. So there's not very much water left in the bag. So let's check this grass. Now what I'll do differently on this grass is I will let the water run down before I pull it out of here. The grass doesn't really absorb the water like the leaves do. Yeah, sure the grass is wet, but it's only moist compared to how those leaves were. So, look at that water. Hour and a half. It's a pretty decent amount. So what did we learn from this experiment? That's how much water I got total from five bags. And it was more than double that originally, but I lost a lot of water when I pulled out the leaves, pulled out the grass. Okay, what did we learn? The water hanging from the trees that collected in the bag was probably pure water. It's very clean, no debris, and there was a decent amount of it. And also, I didn't lose any water removing the bag from the tree. I lost maybe only a few drops that stuck to the limb. So that is a very effective way to get water, clean water, and probably just drink it straight out of the bag if your bag is clean. Now, as far as stuffing the leaves in the bag and putting those in the sun, it did produce a lot of water. However, you can't really get the water off the surface of the leaves where it's condensated you know pull out each leaf and lick it what do you do so a lot of a lot of water was lost just by removing the leaves now before I have collected water using that technique filling a bag with yopon and I would just tip the bag up and drink the water straight from the bag but you run a risk of getting sick from contaminated water, bird droppings, you know, things like that. So you got to be careful. But like I said, hanging the bag on a limb produced the cleanest water. The grass put out a lot of water. It was somewhat dirty because there were a few roots in there and so it was dirty water. But it was easy to pull out the grass and keep all the water in the bag because of the shape of the grass, the texture of it. It just didn't, the water didn't cling to it. So hanging from the tree was number one. Number two was grass. And number three was the individual leaves stuffed in the bag. So thanks for watching Survival Theory. Be sure to like, subscribe, 
and I'll see you next time.